And look at this. We have a 36-36. We swing in. And we just obliterate them. <laughs> oh, wow, massive. Hello, YouTube. I welcome to this fine day. Today, we are going to have a look at Sithers Harvest Hand in Historic Brawl. This deck aims to win by playing the commander, playing out a bunch of enchantments, and drawing a ton of cards while doing so. So, this is the third time Sithers has been featured on this channel. Um, the first deck to do so, in fact. And that is just due to popular demand because this deck got a ton of new toys. Uh, from Kamigawa. So if we search for uh, set Neo, we have a bunch of really cool cards um, here from the latest set. And there are some that are missing that people probably ask me why have I excluded them, but for that, uh, just watch the end of the video. Um, first and foremost, the, the changes we've made from previous versions are we used to have a few more one mana enchantments that just played basically as one mana one one enchantment creatures. Uh, I've cut them. And so that kind of makes cards like Conclave Tribunal a bit worse. But at the bottom line, we can always tap Sithis for this. And then it's at the very least a three mana uh, like uh, Banishing Light effect, right? It's just banishing light at that point and it can get a bit better and uh, that's why I still decide to run Conclave Tribunal. Overall, um, the deck has had some great great additions from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, the most notable one being Jukai Naturalist, because that thing is a house. So previously we had a, a few other effects that reduced the cost of enchantment by one, I did not play those simply because those cards weren't enchantments. Druka Naturalist is an enchantment, so it does draw you a card of Sithis, and that is pretty, pretty great. We have a total of 40 enchantments in the deck currently. And um, we've cut down on some of the lands as well. And we fit in a few non-enchantments um, as well. Something like a uh, time of safekeeping go goes a long, long way. It's basically a second copy of Karamantra's Blessing. And um, we do have a bunch of cards, you know, like uh, Michiko's Reign of Truth, um, Nettlesist, uh, Katilda, that are very big individual threats that count the amount of enchantments in play. And that way we can just win the game. I'm currently running uh, kind of as flex spots, uh, rest in peace and conviction. Uh, conviction replaces a basically two mana draw card enchantment. Um, there are like three of them that I don't play uh, currently. And I think the best copy of those is, um, where is it? Rune of Might that uh, is a two mana card that gives trample and draws a card. Um, but there is also flying and there is a slightly worse rune of might um, as well. I am currently playing again conviction here because that can just bounce itself and play bounce play bounce play bounce and especially with a Juka naturalist in the field that is pretty crazy. And um, yeah uh, rest in peace we're trying out um, because let, let's see how relevant it is. Uh, if it's not too relevant like in your games like ever you don't need this card but you know let's Let's look how it's doing today with a few new commanders here and there. Um, overall, I think the deck got some great, great up upgrades. Uh, Buseju who endures is especially insane in the mirror match. Um, like that is card you <laughs> you really have to watch out for in the mirror match. It's basically one mana destroy the opponent's commander, which is absolutely crazy. And um, I got new seed of the empire is like basically free to play in this deck you can just replace the planes and you're fine right um yeah anyways let's jump right into some gameplay and uh let's see where this bad boy is going nowadays like does it win all the games again or maybe it starts losing who knows uh, hope you enjoy the gameplay if you do uh please leave a like subscribe to your channel all the cool stuff um and I mean, if you don't want to do that, that's totally fine. Just write me in the comments how much you hate me. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's go. We are ready to play against Essica, God of the Tree. Uh, no colors. Yeah, now we have some colors. That's pretty great. Yeah, we have to sadly start out on tab scattered growths. Um, kind of sucks, but... It is what it is. I think that's still fine. Playable hand. 
Getting a Mox there would be great, honestly. Then we can play Sithis Paladin class. Have some like pseudo protection up, or maybe just the Cerulean Caretaker, right? Who knows? But I think getting the draw of the Paladin class in case they remove Sithis is pretty important. <clears throat> Let's see. Yep, let's keep scattered growth tapped. Ooh, now I'm pretty tempted to just play it out like this. Yeah. Safekeeping is pretty great here. Um Okay. So we play Sithis. Okay, that resolves. I think I wanna get out the Lanwells and hold up the Tamiya safekeeping. I mean, I have so much green mana here. It's a bit annoying, honestly, but um, I think it's fine overall. I just wanted to hold up the safekeeping. I could have just played the Paladin class. Um, let's see what they have. Mm -hmm. Riot of the Elysian Grove. Okay, oh yes, planes. It's ex that's exactly what I want. Um, I mean, let's start on the conviction. Yep, Paladin class. And could upgrade this, but I. Oh, you know what? I could borrow time. Maybe I shouldn't have played the Paladin class. Really. I think I should borrow time this dried here so they don't ramp more. Oh no, wait! They just don't have the lands in hand. Because they could have played a, a land last turn, but they don't have the lands, right? Otherwise they would have played one. But I'm taking them off some colors here as well, right? They didn't kill the Sithis last turn. Hmm. I, th I believe I shouldn't have played the Paladin Glass here and then just hold up Tamiya's safekeeping. And then... If I don't need the safekeeping, I can just bounce the conviction to hand. That was probably my safest bet there. Um, but yeah, this is looking pretty fine for me. Well, they're just passing. Yeah, that is just great, actually. Um, yeah, let's play Calyx and start plussing. Uh, Heliot. I mean, I think I just want to swing in with this. Yeah, sure. And pass turn. And now I have enough mana to bounce this conviction and play safekeeping. <clears throat> but the opponent being screwed on mana is obviously pretty brutal. They have all their cards except white. I'm just curious how they, they constructed their deck that they just can't play anything here. I think Wilderness Reclamation is really not that threatening because they didn't do anything with it previously anyways. Like with their mana, I mean. Okay. Oh, Ancestral Mask. Well, yeah, that is just going to kill the opponent, right? Um, Play a... Yep. Play a Idiot. Play a mask. I think I. Let's let's do it like this. Yeah, I think I should have plus Calyx first to start off, but um, yeah, let's get the cheapest enchantment here, because I'm actually just trying to go for the kill here. So do this, but I still want to keep up the Tamiya safekeeping through all of this. Um, yep. This doesn't matter too much, what I'm putting this on is just, uh, just for damage. Swinging for 15. I have Tamiya safe keeping up, I have a Heliod, I have a Calyx ticking up, but yeah, the opponent really, like, they didn't have anything. It's just a bit, I'm a bit curious how they constructed their deck that they just, like, like, usually you just load up with all the cheap kill spells and then you play all your, uh, like, big threats. But none of that from the opponent's side of the field. 
Cadê ele? GG. We are ready to play against Nif Mizzet Reborn. And... Now this is kind of not what I want from this matchup. Um, it's a bit like linear and you know loses to a lot of spot removal and that's exactly what I expect my opponent to have so let's mold this. I think this is a bit better to play with. Um, it's a bit awkward double tap land. Um, yeah let's play the sun petal growth tapped here. The opponent plays another tap land, I'm 100%. Yeah, they're, they're just. Ooh, Gilded Goose. That smells a lot like Fatal Push to me, honestly. If I expect my opponent to have a Fatal Push, what does that mean? Um, I don't just want to run out this Paladin class and then just call it a day there. Right? Oh, it's just an opt. Oh, interesting. Yeah, play you. Last turn. Hm. I mean, I could have went for Mox Ember Sithis and then play the Paladin class. Yeah, now maybe I give them too much, like, tempo there. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, they kind of... Yeah. That's fine, that's fine. Play you, play you, I'm going to pay with this, yep, I'm going to play an unbridled growth I think, and immediately crack it, mm -hmm. Let's see if I get a uh, protection spell, if I, and if I don't, then I just play the Cerule Caretaker here, sure, do that, pass turn. Probably is like the opponent is probably killing my Sithis, but then I can redeploy it, have two mana up, and don't do anything with that mana actually? Huh, oh, interesting. Hmm. Open off the sea, that's fine. <clears throat> Let's see. Double top. Okay, so I expect at least one kill spell here. Four mana up. Like, I would be very surprised if Sithis lives here. Follow against command, okay. Mm -hmm. I really want a protection spell now. Okay, reprobation. Um, I could just like upgrade Paladin class, but like the only card that actually deals two damage in their deck is probably Call Against Command, right? I could also just like dry off the Elysian Grove and then play another land. I kind don't of like that. So do this and then upgrade. Yep. I think that's fine. Just get a bunch of like mana out and then um like when I play Sithis and I like play an enchantment, draw double like get two lands off the top, I can just actually play them. Okay. Live Miserborn. What cards do they get from this? Casualties? Oh my god, yeah. This casualties is like a real problem. Enchantment creature land. Yep, yep. That's pretty problematic. And a time wipe. Okay. Hmm. I really need a draw engine here uh, on the field. Oh man. I mean, I could just swing with a double striking dried of the Leasing Grove, but then they just like block it with Nif, and they're actually pretty happy with that trade. Um, let's just upgrade. Play just Parasentinel. Pass the turn. Like, I'm fine with them killing the Paladin class, honestly. It's just. Um, yeah, this is not a favorable matchup for Sithis, indeed. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay. I need like a 
card advantage engine to stick on the field, something like a... Um, something like... an Enchantress's Presence. Something that just draws me cards. Because I desperately need just card quantity in my hand. <clears throat> Having cardboard in a cardboard game is pretty good. I feel like they're just going to casualties of more me, and that is actually what I want. Yeah, that is fine. Ooh, those, those are also the just... Oh yeah, no, 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 the, the, the blocks. Getting set back on mana here. Um, um, this is all not too great. I really don't want to play the Sithers, but I feel like I just need to cash this in for a card. If I have a counter spell, I think I am pretty much done for. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then they have more removal for the in the form of a time wipe. Bring back a Niv Mizzet. I think I just have to do this. I mean I know that they're bouncing their own Niv Mizzet with a time wipe or like bounce a druid play it, and then just play the Niv Mizzet from the command zone. It's just like I just need time to not die. And bringing back Uro. Yeah, Uro is a real problematic card actually here. Otherwise, I think I would have been in a decent spot. Oh, they're actually just time wiping. Bounce Niv, play Niv. Reasonable. Yeah. And then refuel doing so. Yeah, pretty good. What are you getting? Ionize. Ashok, Mortality Spear, Peace Park as well, and a Prismatic Command. Yeah, I think they have a bit. Ooh! Well, that's pretty good. That is actually really good. I, I, I can't use my Ancestral Mask here, by the way. That That is a bit of a problem because Sithis now has Shroud and um, I can't target her. But on the flip side, I can hope to draw land next turn and play my Sithis. And that is pretty good. And if Mizzet hopefully can't crash in here. Um, ah no, they just Mortality Spirit the Sterling Grove, right? Then... I feel like I can't do much here. Yeah. It did gain life. That does work. Um, Arcan of Sun's Grace, not much I can do, but that just gets de-sparked. And then play Ashok, remove the Nahiri's Binding. Yeah, I think I can just pack it up. GG! Great game, though. We already played against Sithis Harvest Hand and the Mermage. Oh, opponent goes first is actually what I want to see with the Mana Tithe. Yeah, that's pretty great. And then I have double protection and a Kenrith. Yeah, this is a perfect going second hand in the mirror match. I can hold up the mana tithe. I can like play my Sithis a bit later, have a Karameter's Blessing up. I can transformation their commander. Yeah, pretty, pretty great stuff. I really like it. So, let's see. I'm just going to snap keep this. Yeah, this hand is disgusting. Now I have white up, manatite your commander, into surrender. Come on, I want to see it. Um. Yep. And oh yeah, mm. so good. I'm not going to play out my commander here. Oh, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> GG. <laughs> we are ready to play against Nif Mizzet Reborn. And, um. I do like the Paladin class, but is it good enough? Probably not. I mean, Season of Growth plus Conviction draws a ton of cards. Oh, this is difficult. I can go Scattered Groves turn 1 into turn 2, chant another Paladin class. Into turn three, season conviction. I guess. 
Sure, let's try it. Let's try it. Okay, circle of confinement is not really what I need. Um, so we need to do this first so they can't lightning bolt the Jesperus Sentinel in my turn. Mm hmm. the Sithis, I see. Sure, that is fine. Counter it if you must. Oh no, you don't. Um, if they kill it. Okay, I'm just going to cast the Season of Growth here, get my card in. Just be happy. So it's the plowshares. Yep. That is absolutely fine. It is expected after all. I just want to draw another land here. Um, probably going to like Rune of Might, the Sentinel, draw two cards off of that if I need to. The Paladin class here is pretty, pretty nice, honestly. Angry Rampage. Okay, that is actually pretty bad for us. Okay, Juka Naturalist, and I'm going to. Don't need that. I'm going to Conviction the Naturalist just to draw a card. Ah, oh, no. We missed a land drop. That is really bad for us. Missing this one land drop is really hurting us. Um, I can just draw a bunch of cards off of that. So, Conviction? Yep. Um, do I swing in first? I guess I swing in. So... Conviction for one. Play it again on the naturalist. Draw a card of the season. Yep, Guild Goose. Mm hmm. So they have a counter for a creature spell, I assume. Or. Right. Drowned the lock. Oh, that's. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. That's fine. I'm going to name Niv Mizzet Reborn here so they can't. Uh, refuel in the next turn. Yep. I really like it. I kind of want to Italic Tutor for... Getting rid of Juke and Naturalist, I see. That's a pretty good one. Um... So, Sithis... Uh, I want to get a draw engine, I think, but at the same time... Something that wins me the game. I mean, they already used their Knight of Autumn. Um, I mean, a draw engine does win me the game, right? But you know what? I could just get a... I think that's pretty good. Getting a Sterling Grove here is pretty great. Yeah, doing that, and next turn I can play Sithis Rune of Might on the land. Um, I mean, Season of Growth plus Sterling Growth is obviously a non -bow. Okay, they didn't like that card whatsoever. If I had one more mana, that would have obviously been great. Okay, let this Sithis get countered. Oh, nope, it doesn't get countered. Uh, it did not get countered, I mean. Um, Raska. Okay. Uh, unfortunate. But now, the Sigil of the Empty Throne will hopefully... Go oh, that's even better. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Hopefully I get a land here so I can set this into Sigil. Or Sigil into Sithis. Kartra versus a 4-4. That's pretty interesting. I think they should plus Raska sacrificing the Night Drawing card off of it. And if they do that, they want to swing in first. Oh, they did manage to hit that land drop. Okay, but we do have a ton of mana here with the Marari Swig. Just, just want to get a land, really. Ah, oh, that is, again, the, the perfect answer. But I mean, that is fine. Now they don't really don't have any enchantment removal anymore. Oh. 
the pain. No, it's fine. That was an easy job. Yeah, they are really teched against Sithis. I like it though. I mean, if they play a lot against Sithis, that, that is pretty reasonable. Um, yeah, let's get another land. We're going to Bound and Gold, the uh, Kaya. And then pass the turn. We're going to play all these cards after Sithis, I guess. It's just... Uh... I mean, they can just plus... Oh, they just minus on that. I think that's reasonable, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. They mill us, that's fine. Now if they want to get rid of the Sithis, they would have to... Um, kill the Kaya. Okay. Okay, okay. We have one turn. Oh no, I know what's going to happen. They plus Raska, sacrificing the Knight of Autumn. So now that comes back to their hand. And that's basically just an, a loop that repeatedly kills our commander. Yeah, I think we can. Yep, yep, yep. GG. We are ready to play against Koma. So, Simic Control. I see. Ooh. Destiny Spinner, aren't you a beautiful card? <clears throat> Pulled Mulligan twice already. A bit of my, too much green for my taste in my hand, but I think that's fine. I think I'm supposed to leave a Destiny Spinner, so Wash Away can't even get me here. <clears throat> Okay, um, Catilda, that fits perfectly into the curve, That it's uncounterable, right, yeah, it's creatures and enchantments, swing in. They bounce the Destiny Spinner so they can actually <laughs> counter it, right? So now we lead on the Sithis, because if they counter Sithis, that is fine if we still get to play the Destiny Spinner, but if they don't, oh yeah, beautiful. And now I get to resolve the Destiny Spinner, which is the card I really want to resolve. Sure, that's pretty fine. Next turn I can play Sithis, I have Tamiya Safekeeping up. Wilderness Reclamation is a great card for them. Okay. Oh, I also just have God Swelling up. That's even better. Okay. Um, I feel like... I, I'm I'm starting to respect a few like flash creatures, something like a wolf pack ambusher, and like a four four uh, for um, with flash. I I don't know. I just think respecting some of these flash creatures is pretty good. I have Tammy safekeeping as well here. Okay. So. Mhm. Mm Safe keeping onto the sure. Let's protect Sithis now. And they just surrender. Oh, interesting. GG. We are ready to play against Sithis Harvest Sand in the mirror match. And um, Sand kind of. I mean, it's, yeah. I think I think it's a decent go second hand. Oh no, no, this is a great go second hand again in the mirror match specifically. Because watch this, we're going to do some nasty stuff here. Oh my god, Ancestral Mask is busted in the mirror match because this counts each enchantment on the battlefield, not just your own. So if they go Sithis here and don't have a Mox Ember and then something to protect their commander with, it is going to get nasty. Okay, watch this, okay? I, I don't think you guys are ready for this. So we can go Sithis, and then we can actually just Baffling End, removing their commander. And now we have four mana in play, next turn five. And then for if they play Sithis on four mana, we can just mana tithe it as well. Oh my god, this is so disgusting. I just want to get out... Um, like, a, I just want to get through my all those cards as quickly as possible. Yeah, sure. 
<gasps> oh my god, yes. So now this, this, and we hold up Mana Tithe. Play it, Commander. I dare you. Mana Tithe into Conceit. I want to see it again. It was so fun the first time this <laughs> in this video. So Weaver of Harmony is a card that I, I wanted to test here. The idea is that you can actually just... <laughs> Mana Tithe is quite an effect. I should have Mana Tithe that... Um, yeah, my um, mistake. I, I should have manatized the Destiny Spinner. Okay. Um, yeah, the the idea is that you can copy the triggered ability of Sithis. I still have a Legendary in play, which is pretty great. Should have just tied the Destiny Spinner. That was my mistake. Um. Boom, boom, and I'll see just this right. Yeah, do that. Cleric class, draw a card. Um, I oh don't no. cleric class, please. Yep, draw. Mm. And now weaver. Beautiful. Draw a bunch of cards, and ooh, Jukai Naturalist is a pretty great one. Yep. <clears throat> Jukai Naturalist just makes everything super super cheap. So the reason why I was supposed to counter the Destiny Spinner, or like at least tax them on mana with that, is so they couldn't have done this exact line of play, because I can't like counter anything after Destiny Spinner is in play, or like most of the things, right? So I, I just tax them for one mana the turn it comes down, so they can't play two mana card after it. That is the idea here. Um, but I'm drawing pretty well here. So Juka Naturalist, yep. I can... Oh my god, is that just lethal? I think that's just lethal. Um, you can't block. Yep. All that glitters onto you, I guess. Ancestor Mask. Yep. Now, oh my god, Conviction as well. And look at this. We have a 36-36. We swing in. And we just obliterate them. <laughs> oh, wow, massive. Uh, GG. <laughs> we are done with the games. I hope you enjoyed them as much as I did. And yeah, Sithis Haru's Hand is a, you know, still a pretty, pretty strong commander. Um, and uh, yeah, overall, the thing to do if you want to play Enchantress in Historic Brawl. So, um, I mean, how did the games go, right? Uh, so this deck is pretty well tacked against the mirror. Um, like, we've won every single mirror match. And against super hard control, uh, this deck can struggle, actually. It's just, um... Like, if they can also... If they have the capability of removing multiple enchantments back-to-back, -back, that is, like, non-creature enchantments that you usually win to use to win against control, if they can remove those as well, then you're kind of in trouble. Um, so for the cards I've put in for testing, right, um, for example, like, Rest in Peace, that could have been relevant, for example, against Emery and uh, whatnot, right? Um, so if you play against those decks a lot, then Rest in Peace is definitely where you want to be. I feel like the Weaver of Harmony, like you need to get at least two activations for this thing to be worth it, I feel. Because if you just get one activation and just draw one card here, um, I you could have just played a draw, um, like a two mana enchantment that draws you a card, and that would have been cheaper. But I mean, ultimately it can just copy other things, right? Um, for example, it can copy uh, the triggered ability of Sigil of the Empty Throne to get another angel, whatnot, right? And so on and so forth. But ultimately, you want to draw cards with the Weaver. So, I'm not sure how to feel about this particular card. But, um, yeah, it, overall, uh, the deck uh, is doing pretty well. Um, as you can see, this, again, just absolutely destroys the mirror. Um... If you want to play this deck on a budget, what can you cut? What do you need? And uh, honestly, the the one drops is where it's at, where you like really want to be, because like just having a mana accelerator is great. Shaper Sanctuary is massive. Like if you get that on turn one against control decks, like they need to basically two for one themselves to like remove your um, 
uh, creature because uh, you just get to cantrip off of your creature and like them killing your creature trying to go for one for one but then you just keep drawing and drawing and that is absolutely massive like you, again rest in peace attack card if you don't see a lot of graveyard decks cut it for a draw and uh, uh, like a draw enchantment Oh, in Intervention, Weaver, um, those are pretty good, but, uh, the Sanctum Weaver specifically. The Weaver Harmony, I talked about this. You can just replace this with a draw effect. And Sterling Grove is an absolutely filthy card um, in the right match. Yeah, you want enchantment based win conditions, right? So though like all your win conditions that are enchantment based are pretty important. So Heliod is great, Sigil of the Empty Throne is great, Mirari's Wig is pretty good, Hollow Taunting is great. You don't need Calyx and Archon and like Catilda necessarily or Nettlesis, but those are just really nice to have. If it says draw if you play an enchantment, you you absolutely want to have it in your deck. So that's Cetestian Champer, Enchantress Presence, right? And I mean, Dried of Elysian Grove, if you draw, if you go off and draw a bunch of cards, having the additional land drop is pretty great. Um, but overall, it's also not a needed card. And um, yeah, every, like, you want color fixing lands for sure. Um, Besage if you want to, like, just absolutely destroy the mirror even more, obviously. Like on you, it, it is a nice card to have that you have a lot in a lot of decks nowadays, but it's not really needed and you you want color fixing like as you can see you really want the color fixing in your deck um like to a point where you really don't play any like co other cool lands you just need all your colors and that is all you care about in this deck and for a two color deck the the, the mana uh, the color com uh, like situation is not that great but overall Sithis Harvest Hand. Uh, this is my new and updated version for Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Um, if you enjoyed it, uh, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I mean, I know that I enjoy uh, Sithis for sure. It is a pretty great deck. It is one of the most popular decks, so I decided to, you know, give it an old update for uh, a set where we got a, new, a bunch of new enchantments. Anyways, see you in the next video.